Did You Know? Numerous musicians have fallen under Bacon's spell. Metallica would fiercely demand bacon be available at every single meal on every single day of the band's tours. The Foo Fighters are also known to require bacon backstage at every performance. In fact, the band's hospitality rider, a document which lists their requests for venues, specifically reads, Bacon. I call it God's currency. However, their love for bacon pales in comparison to the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. On the night of February 1st, 1976, Elvis was entertaining several renowned officers of the law at his Graceland mansion. At one point, the officers began reminiscing of a legendary sandwich called the Fool's Gold Loaf, served by the Colorado Mine Company in Denver. The sandwich consisted of a hollowed out loaf of bread jam-packed with a jar of peanut butter, a jar of grape jelly, and a pound of bacon. Elvis became so enamored with the sandwich that he felt he needed one as soon as possible. So Elvis and his guests drove over to the Memphis airport, boarded his personal jet, and took off for Denver. When they landed at 1.40 a.m., they were met by the owners of the Colorado Mine Company with 22 Fool's Gold Loaf sandwiches. Elvis invited everyone who made the sandwiches to join in on the legendary late-night snack on board his plane. The ensuing party lasted around three hours before Elvis and his guests took off back for Memphis in the wee hours in the morning. This love for bacon, though, was only a small precursor to what had been named Bacon Mania. Bacon Mania is described as an enthusiasm for bacon that's most prominent in the United States and Canada. This mania started in the late 1990s when diets focusing on high-protein foods, such as the Atkins diet, became popular. It led to an assortment of novelty bacon dishes and bacon-related products being popularized online. The biggest product to emerge from Bacon Mania is arguably Wendy's Baconator Cheeseburger, but there have been many other products. The growing popularity of bacon also introduced products like bacon salt, maple bacon donuts, bacon A's, bacon ice cream, bacon bubblegum, and even bacon infused vodka. The Bad Decisions Bar in Baltimore, Maryland has an entire menu of bacon dishes and serves big bowls of bacon at the bar, where up to 30 pounds of bacon is consumed in a two hour period. Baltimore's Golden West Cafe also sells the Bacon Bullet, a cocktail of bourbon, lemon, and maple syrup with applewood smoked bacon replacing the swizzle stick. Other drinks that popped up during Bacon Mania are bacon soda, bacon and martinis, BLT cocktails, and the Mitch Morgan, a cocktail comprised of a shot of bourbon whiskey with a garnish of fried bacon served in a glass internally coated with a thin layer of bacon grease. Bacon Mania has had a great cultural impact and has even led to bacon clubs, bacon recipe contests, blogs, a dating app for bacon lovers, and bacon camps. The San Francisco Weekly reported on the first bacon camp and how the event included lectures on bacon as art, a PowerPoint presentation, as well as judging and awards. Bacon also has some historic traditions surrounding it. The town of Great Dunmo, England, holds a tradition dating back to the Middle Ages known as the Dunmo Flitch Trials. In the trials, married couples who can swear they've never regretted their marriage for a whole year and one day are awarded a cut of bacon. According to legend, this tradition came after Lord Reginald Fitzwalter and his wife went to the gates of Little Dunmo Priory disguised as peasants one year and a day after their marriage. Upon meeting the prior of the monastery, they begged for his blessing, and impressed by their devotion, the prior gifted them a flitch of bacon. Fitzwalter then revealed his true identity and awarded land to the priory on the condition that a flitch of bacon be gifted to any couple who could prove their devotion of one year and a day. Some theorize that the flitch trials are where the phrase bringing home the bacon originates from, suggesting a husband who could bring bacon home from the trial would be a highly desirable partner. However, the first recorded use of the saying as we know it was on September 3rd, 1906 in Goldfield, Nevada. A lightweight championship boxing match between Joe Gans, the first African American boxer to ever win a world title, and Oscar battling Nelson was about to start. Just before it did, Gans received a telegram from his mother that ended with, Everybody says you ought to win. Peter Jackson will tell me the news and you bring home the bacon. Despite breaking his hand three quarters of the way into the fight, Gans continued the match, concealing his injury from the judges, and ultimately emerged victorious. Reportedly, Gans sent a telegram back to his mother after the match, telling her that he had not only got the bacon, but the gravy as well, and mailed her a cheque of $6,000. Afterwards, bringing home the bacon became a popular saying among the boxing community where it has spread to this day. This wasn't the only time bacon played a part in history, however. During World War II, the US government formed an American Fat Salvage Committee. Their main task was to urge housewives across America to save their leftover cooking fat, particularly from bacon, and donate it to the war effort. According to the committee, one pound of bacon fat had enough glycerin in it to produce around a pound of explosives. In return, anyone who donated grease to one of the quarter million participating delis, butcheries, and frozen food plants across the nation would receive four cents per pound. To help promote the venture, Walt Disney was hired in 1942 to produce Out of the Frying Pan into the Firing Line, an animated short propaganda film starring Minnie and 
and Pluto. The short implores homemakers to help out the front lines from their kitchens, calling a skillet of bacon grease a little munitions factory. Bacon has also been used in a number of medical remedies. In 2014, the Ig Nobel Prize, who honor unusual and imaginative scientific accomplishments, awarded Ian Humphreys, Sonal Soraya, Walter Belenke, and James Dworkin for treating an uncontrollable nosebleed with a nasal tampon made of bacon. The four-year-old patient suffered from Glanzman thrombasthenia, a medical disorder that impairs blood platelets from properly clotting, which often causes dangerous hemorrhaging, especially in the nose. After conventional treatments failed, Dr. Soraya claimed, we had to do some out of the box thinking. That's where we put our heads together and thought of the olden days and what they used to do. The medical team tried their bacon invention twice and in both cases it quickly stopped the girl's bleeding. The team found that the bacon's high salt content induced swelling, allowing the girl's blood vessels to contract, slowing the blood flow enough for the clotting to begin. Did you also know that M&Ms were originally planned to appear in the movie E.T., but Universal had to use Reese's Pieces after being denied permission to use M&Ms? For more facts like this, check out the Did You Know Food video on Reese's, and if you liked listening to my voice for a few minutes, well, I'm afraid to say I don't do any food-related stuff. That's quite sad, I know. I do video game-related stuff, and it's pretty silly and pretty ridiculous, just like Did You Know Food. See, if you like the wacky and the crazy and the unexplainable, check out my channel today.